bunch of balloons around here. You're a balloon. You're definitely another balloon. Balloon. <laughs> Show your balloon. Another balloon. So I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't matter how good of a cat you have. It doesn't matter how much, you know, you take care of your grain and the food and everything. You kind of put it in some kind of mice proof stuff. Mice always tend to find us. And uh, this past kidding season, I left a couple of things on that little storage area that I have on the side of the goat house which is now going to be enclosed and the I mean I'm going to show you this is what happened and this is why I don't keep it in the barn look that is either mice or a rat's nest and it's just by the python powder that I hope it will kill them I'm sorry if you love mice I don't so yeah, there you go. That's why you don't keep any of that stuff in your barn or in your storage in the barn. So I guess it took me a while to learn the lesson that mice love selenium. They absolutely love colostrum powder and they will eat anything and every single kind of packaging you have unless it's tin. So one of the lessons that I've learned is if I want to store anything outside that can be in the outside temperatures, it needs to be in some kind of a tin container, metal container, something that will actually keep it safe from little critters. And I mean, it's not even only mice, but spiders and that kind of thing that is never fun. And last time I had to throw away quite a few things from my kitten kit just because mice got to it. and. Among those things were selenium paste. I bought, I think, three different tubes. One that had more the measurements for little kids and the other ones that are for like bigger or at least they have the easier to do numbers for more weight for bigger goats. But um, yeah, uh, mice got to it and they ate it completely. So apparently, it's very delicious, even for mice. I should try it myself. So because of that, I decided that the very priceless real estate room I have in the trailer, which is where we live, uh, was going to have to be dedicated to the goat stuff. And to be honest, that specific space was my pantry. I mean, and I still don't have enough room for everything that they need. And of course I keep in the fridge things like penicillin and antibiotics and the tetanus antitoxin and what else, the CD&T, all that kind of thing, I keep it in the fridge outside because I don't have room in here. But that little door behind me used to be my pantry and actually it was quite a good pantry because it's very insulated and it's very dark so that was my favorite spot to put all canned stuff I should say so it keeps at a lower temperature no matter how hot it is not that we get too hot but you know even if it is like the one the space that I'm using as a pantry in the back and I'll show you now it's one of those spaces that it's very light very airy and um, it you know it's not the best condition where you should keep your canned goods if you can them yourself or if you buy them from the store it's just that's the way it is okay so here it is and <laughs> this is my pantry as you can see right here I used to store all my canned goods in here and I had this little things out here to store spices and stuff like that and it worked for years and it was amazing and I really do miss it for all my homemade stuff canned goods 
I just think that it's the best, best spot in the entire house. As you can see, it's very deep. I don't know if it shows here, but it's very deep and it's very, very dark. So it's a perfect spot for canned goods, but right now it's kind of taken over by gold supplies. And again, it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but there's a lot. I have one of these, same size outside with things that I'm going to be using with the girls today. So yeah, imagine that this, this part will be covered with that too. So I got more colostrum. I don't know if I already shared it in a different video. I feel like... These are going to be such long videos that I'm going to have to split them. But I shared that the colostrum that I got last year, mice got to it. So, and I showed you where I store it now. So I got a new one of those. Then I have my vitamin B complex, which is if you don't have that and you have goats, you should get it. It's something that at any sign of sickness, you give them a shot of this and it helps with the rumen. This is a water bottle, but it actually has holes and it's a mixture with iodine. So when Rocky has a problem with his skirts, like they're bleeding or something, I can just go squirt this on his head and then wait for it to dry and add the aloe shield. That's what I like the most for that. I have a couple of this. I really didn't need them, never used them before, but I know that they're very useful for either an injury or for kids that have weaker legs and stuff like that. I have some peanut butter for the bolus gun, even though right now I don't have one because my dog ate it. I have some cornstarch. Cornstarch works as a blood stopper kind of thing. You just have to Put it on wherever it's bleeding a lot and put and put pressure. The key is to put pressure. No matter how much you dump on him, if you don't put pressure, you're just going to end up with a mess and really the blood is going to take a long time to stop. So that's that's something I learned the hard way. And then I have, her, I have my Utter Balm. I don't know why it's not focusing. It's probably because I'm too close. But I mean... This is the room <laughs> between that and excuse my walls, they're kind of, they need to be painted. But that's pretty much all I have here. There's a bunch of other stuff that I have outside in another tin can like this one. So that's something that we're going to need. And I do have the lid for it. Right now it doesn't fit. But if I need to take stuff outside, like for the girls, I will make things fit and close it because of the mice. This... I made a mess <laughs> with the titanium dioxide for my soap and now it's kind of all stained but this is to shave the girls I just cannot even look at it comes with instructions and they're just basically clippers super sharp clippers and it has two different settings and you can cut it shorter or longer then down here I have what I use for this budding. This is the glove that I use for this budding. I think it's my husband's welding glove. This is the disbudding iron. I think it's the this is the 30. I'm gonna link these things down below because I remember when I used to look for these videos. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the stuff. I couldn't remember. People maybe didn't use the proper name and I just it was it was very hard for me to find it so I do label all my things this is for this budding it's missing the aloe shield and when I this bud I also which I'm gonna show you this year um, I also do take with me some ice packs because it really helps a lot to cool it down faster and to give them some kind of comfort immediately oh. down here I have some red cell. This is for when you have an anemic goat, you treat that goat for worms and then you need some iron to kind of help it back. This you do a drench 
and I'll show you how I do it. I had to buy a new drenching gun. Back here, I have my tattoo stuff. I've never used it. And I've already registered all my girls, but they I do know the numbers. I do know what goes on each ear. I just have to get it done uh, for specifically a theme and pass. So as soon as I have some time after a theme kids, then I'll I'll get that done. And then I have this other can that is for banding. Let me take this over here to show you. I have the banding tool and I have the banding rings. When I'm going to band the goat, I also give the tetanus antitoxin, which I think, I mean, it's been said over and over again to me. This is just a really old coffee can that I was using for something different, but it's dry, it keeps it safe. And I don't know if you knew, but mice love those rings. And they ate half of a bag of mine. So not cute, not happy about that. So that's why now everything is in tin. Oh, here I have a new drenching gun. I don't know what happened to the one that I had before, but it wasn't working properly. I haven't used it yet, as you can see, which I'm pretty happy about. I have some extra syringes. I bought quite a few. And if you ask me what is the best needle that you can get, at least for me, is the 18 gauge 1 inch. That is the best. I can do babies. I can do older goats. The problem is, and probably have to open it to show you, but when Rocky had listeriosis, I even had to reuse <laughs> one uh, because I couldn't find the 18 gauge. This is a very short needle. It's only one inch. I know there are like shorter ones and uh, but this is what made my life so much easier. I don't know if you know but penicillin is very thick and and now I can I can't remember if it was ivermectin or if it was a CDNT, it's also very thick. One of them was very, very thick. And when I got the smaller needles, let me see if I can find those and show you. Now, let me show you this other one. And this one comes with the syringe and everything. But look at this. Can you see how thick? thin this is. I don't know if you will be able to see it. Now I'm gonna put it compare side by side so you can see the difference. I mean I was told that this one was going to be perfect for babies and all I'm gonna say is that even with babies this needle bends inside if you are not quite used to be giving shots to babies like they move around I just pinch myself with a needle I do that all the time look I do that all the time every time I'm gonna give an injection I get it myself first and that's why I have to throw away so many needles so anyways so what the problem is is that this ones are too thin and because they're too thin they bend inside the baby goat as they're moving around and I don't have very much luck with them so maybe it's good for people with more experience maybe with a more and you can find this like it comes like this too with this gauge of needle uh, it's not that I'm saying that you shouldn't buy it like this. I'm just saying that you should look for an 18 gauge if you want to get it done fast. Yes, I do know that it looks kind of scary and it looks very thick. But I, I can assure you that it's going to make it so much easier to go through the skin fast Put whatever you need to inject on the baby, whatever it is, the CDNT, the antitoxin, whatever the case may be. It's going to make it so much easier with a, with maybe an 18 gauge compared to, I think this is a 22. So if I'm not mistaken, if I'm just speaking stuff out of my butt, I'll probably, I'll correct it on the screen. But 
the bigger the number is the smaller the gauge so 18 one and one inch long this are my favorite and I'm gonna show you I have a lot of them <laughs> I mean I try to have different kind of syringes like this one that is a 6 ml um, I also have some small ones I don't have them here but apparently all these are 6 ml and I really like the bigger ones meaning that the one that will hold more medicine in here because when I was doing Rocky I needed to do I think I was doing 5 ml of um, vitamin B and that's a lot for what you typically give to a goat but because he had listeriosis he needed to have a very aggressive treatment so because of that this is uh, what I go for right now because before I had some smaller syringes and I had to do I don't know what it was I think it was four maybe four mls so I would do four and then go in and I would have to go in with a different syringe so I wouldn't get the inside of the medicine uh, with the already used needle stuff you know you don't want to put that back inside your medicine or your vitamin B so I had to put another needle in this one and get one more ml to give to Rocky and that was a nightmare and again I don't buy any small gauge needles I learned my lesson and again, this was because of Rocky, but um, yeah, it's 22. I can see it right here. See, this is maybe, yeah, this is a 22. And the 22 is still wobbly. I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable giving a shot with this one, not even to a baby. Containers, because again, it's 10. And because mice cannot get to it, I've had mice eat my syringes or chew them, I should say. And it needs a lid too, so very important. I also have another one of these, and this is only for cotton rounds or balls. And I usually have some alcohol inside and this kind of little sprayer we use this a lot during the pandemic so I'm just gonna try to reuse it but let me show you again if you're going to use some kind of cotton to clean you want to make sure that they are clean so I always clean this container itself and just drop it in there and this was also outside with the girls' stuff that I need to take for them. Another thing that I keep in one of those tin containers in my pantry, <laughs> it's the Ivermax or Ivermectin. I, I've used this. I have to say that I've used it, especially when I have kids that get lice after they're born. So this is one of the things that I use it, but you use so little that you don't really need that much. So that's another thing. Another thing I have learned the hard way is to never, ever, ever leave your trimmers outside. I ruined two of them that way. I left them in the goat area and it started sweating and then it got rusted and right now even though I don't have to throw them away I can't use it for the goats because they're not sharp enough and they and they can't be sharpened as well because of the damage that happened so I it also kind of messed up this that makes it open and it happened on both of them because I left them outside I think that this pair was about $17 so you don't I I don't want to be spending that money uh, so often and this one comes with this little thing that you can attach it to you and that way you can always be in control and kind of drop it when needed but I love this trimmers and I can't live without them but now I take care of them and leave them inside so they another thing that I keep in there 
this is selenium and vitamin E gel again I'm just going through my little container here the one that I'm taking to the back to work with the girls I don't know about this container it's like this one it says newborn you should give two mls and to an adult four mls and guess what it goes by five and you're like how is this helping me I just do five mls for adults because I make a mess so I figure whatever I overdo it's gonna end up around their mouth but it's kind of stupid that they do 2 mls and 4 mls and uh, and then they measure by fives which it's kind of dumb I also keep in there the pink eye spray this is the vetricin antimicrobial I mentioned this in another video the only difference between this Vedrosin and the regular one is number one that this is more expensive I think this is $30 I bought it because I had a baby with pink eye the day that he was going to be picked up he got the worst kind of pink eye he looked like he was gonna lose his eye um, and he wasn't picked up for that reason which it was really really sad um, but it actually worked out in the end because he went with his half-brother to another home. So uh, this is for redness, irritation, discharge, and drainage. But you can use this on any kind of wound. And this is antimicrobial. It's going to clean the wound and stuff like the regular Betristan would. And I also use it with Aloe Shield. Um, this is a bandage. A lot of people think it's something else, but it's actually something that you spray and it's a or i use it that way as a bandage um it's a water resistant bandage that kind of protects or it creates this kind of barrier to protect against external stuff like dirt and stuff like that so if you're washing with an antimicrobial kind of product and then you cover it with this i feel like it lasts longer than if you just spray with betrosin which is again I think this one was $30. I used to get the one that was a different packaging and it was by a different company and then when I went to the feed store they said no they just repackaged. I know this is not the brand that I used to get. Um, this comes with 12 capsules and mice have eaten this from me before and to be honest what happened initially is that I left it inside the storage area by the goat's house and it ended up kind of sticking together because of humidity so so now I keep it inside along with some colors because they do get lost and now I have some extra colors and with the brushes so all this stuff goes inside a tin uh, container and then it goes in that cupboard I just wanted to show you this looks nasty but I just wanted to show you that these are the basics things and these are not even everything that I need to have in here there's a lot of other things that I need to be adding there but that I'm buying little by little so I'm trying to make room but everything now it's in a tin can because mice and uh, spiders and little animals will do things to your stuff and that's why I don't keep it in the barn.